my colleague has disappeared. I wanted to introduce him. I will introduce him, whether he appears or not. He is Jean-Charles Guiraud. <laughs> We met for the first time yesterday. That is what is amazing about this event. Mouth organ players from all over the world, piano players, they get together. This should be done as a regular event. I hope that every four years this will happen in Trossingen and the two years between in some other capital like London, Paris, New York, or they're not like Trossingen, but they'll do. <laughs> Would you believe it if I told you that my first visit to Trossingen was in 1934? I'm the only veteran here. I, oh, by the way, I must warn you one thing, don't play tennis with Hans Schmidt. <laughs> he cheats. <laughs> you hit a very good shot, and he says, out. <laughs> it is not out. He cheats. Now that I've introduced my colleague at the piano, I'm going to do a number to show that he is, indis he is dispensable. Watch.
Charlie Musselwhite couldn't begin to do that. <laughs> the next number is pure self-indulgence. In 1987, a, an event similar to this was held in Jersey. Jimmy Hughes, who is the president of this event, promoted that all by himself. It was a great event. And on it, there was a trio. The Serrano Dalmas family from Alicante in Spain, and Antonio Serrano Dalmas, he was 14 years old, he played like an angel. I hated him. <laughs> Later, I did a concert in Paris with Lauren Mizell, and this was for UNESCO. And as it was a children's fund, I said, look, why don't we bring Antonio Serrano from Alicante, and we can do a duet together, which they did. They brought Antonio, he came with his whole family, and we did this duet, and now, as I say, I want to indulge myself. It'll give me great pleasure to do another duet with Antonio Serrano Dalmas. <laughs> We're going to play, as we've played before, the Malagueña, and if he steals the number the way he did in Paris, I will kill you. <laughs> I won't do it then. Good. Be very careful. Remember, I'm old enough to be your agent. He did steal it. I will kill him. <laughs> I wrote a number once. It was for a program about prisons. And I wrote a theme which I called Screws Blues. The reason I called it that is that prisoners refer to their guards as screws. 
Guards do not like to be called screws. Nevertheless, they are called that, and that is why I call this composition Screws Blues. Thank you very much. If you ever go to prison, call me. I'll come and serenade you. I want to thank my colleague, in fact, a man who I once judged to be champion, mouth organ player of England. He's operating my tapes for me, Mr. Brian Chaplin. And Brian, you're about to work again. When I was about 14 years old, I was on the bill with Ruth Edding. I don't know if you remember Ruth Edding, but she was a great singer. Doris Day made a film of her life story. It was called Love Me or Leave Me. And she was married to an honest-to-God gangster. And James Cagney in the picture played the part of the gangster. 
but I knew the original, and compared to him, Cagney was a sissy. I was standing in front of the theater, and he, we called him the Gimp. He drew up in a Packard car, and he said, hey, kid, come here. I said, yes, sir. He said, you got the ting with you? I said, the what? He said, the ting, the doohickey. The tin sandwich! Tin sandwich, you know, that's a pretty dramatic name for a mouth organ. I said, yes, I had it. He kidnapped me. He took me up to the studio where his wife was making a record, and he made me, they made them put me on the record. He said, put the kid on the record. And Ruth Edding, his wife, who was singing, said, Gimp, we can't add another musician. We have an arrangement. He said, Ruthie, baby, I don't think you hear real good. I says, put this kid on the record. Now, in the band, we had Benny Goodman, Jimmy, and Tommy Dorsey, Joe Venuti, Eddie Lang, and they put the kid on the record. And at the end of the session, I said, excuse me, sir, how much am I being paid for this? He says, you little bastard, get out of here. And you know, I was only 15 years old. I knew that was constructive advice. I left. And when the record came out, my name wasn't on it. The reason I'm bringing all this up is that that same week, I wanted to get away from that theater. I went to the Roxy where Paul Whiteman was playing on the bill with his own film, The King of Jazz. And I hung around the stage door and whoever came in or out, I'd blow the mouth organ in their face, hoping someone would say, what a talented kid and give me a job. And Whiteman's saxophone player, the great Frankie Trumbauer, heard me, liked what he heard, took me into Whiteman's dressing room and says, Paul, listen to the kid. And I played poet and peasant. And when I finished playing, Whiteman said, let me hear you play the Rhapsody in Blue. I was 15, I couldn't handle the Rhapsody in Blue. Technically, it was beyond me. But I couldn't admit that to Whiteman, that there was anything I couldn't play. So I said, I don't like Rhapsody in Blue. So he turned to a young man I hadn't noticed before, and he said, how do you like that, George? <laughs> That's how I met Gershwin. But about three years later, there was a farewell party given for me at the home of a man named Jules Glenzer. He was vice president of Cartier, the jeweler. And suddenly, Jules said, Larry and George are going to play the Rhapsody in Blue. Well, by then, I'd heard it so many times. It was in my head. I thought I could handle it. George Gershwin sat at the piano. I started to play. And it was one of those evenings when two musicians had rapport. And when we finished playing, Gershwin got up, put his hand on my shoulder, and he said, the goddamn thing sounds as if I wrote it for you. Which I wouldn't mind as an epitaph, because to me, the goddamn thing still does. Now, I have Gershwin on piano roll, and what I would have liked best was to play that piano roll on a reproducing piano. We couldn't find one, but I do have it on tape. So the first notes you hear will be George Gershwin himself as we re recreate the duet that we did together in 1934, here is George Gershwin and Larry Adler, Rhapsody in Blue.
I was terrified that the applause was going to die down and I wouldn't get to do my encore. I so wanted to do that encore. In fact, if you'd have stopped applauding, I think I'd have done it anyway. I'm dying to do it. It's, again, Brian, I'm so glad you came. You've made my evening. After the show, come to my dressing room, I'll make yours. <laughs> I need Brian again. I, I hope he's still there. Are you still there? Yes. We're going to do the Rodrigo Concierto de Aranjuez. This is the middle movement of the guitar concerto. It's been played by Miles Davis on trumpet, James Galway on flute. People have sung it. I think it fits the mouth organ very well. And here is the middle movement by Joaquin Rodrigo Concierto de Aranjuez.
Just great, isn't it? Und nun wissen wir auch, warum er ein Buch geschrieben hat, How to Tell a Joke, wie man einen Witz richtig erzählt. Das hat er hier dann auch bestens präsentieren können. Did you ever hear the expression a musician's musician? That is somebody who is extremely admired by his colleagues, though they sometimes get green with envy. To get on top in the United States, States as an European is nearly impossible. But one man did it with the same ease that he handles his harmonica. Vielleicht haben Sie schon einmal den Ausdruck gehört, meine Damen und Herren, a musician's musician. Das ist jemand, der von den Kollegen hoch geschätzt wird, auch wenn sie manchmal dabei ein bisschen gelb vor Neid werden. Als Europäer im Mutterland des Jazz Karriere zu machen und die Spitze zu erreichen, das erscheint beinahe Unmöglich, aber ein Mann hat es geschafft mit der gleichen Leichtigkeit, mit der er auch sein Instrument zu spielen weiß, die Harmonika. Und wie sehr man ihn hier in der Weltstadt der Harmonika zu schätzen weiß, das beweist ein Blick auf die Nummernschilder hier. Haben Sie es schon mal gesehen? Da steht ja überall Tut, Tut. Und hier ist er, Tut Stielemanns. Good evening, uh, guten Abend. Ich finde es eine einmalige Erfahrung, dass so viele äh, Mundharmonikaspieler und von Maestro Adler bis die Junge, heutige, the Blues, the Classics, everybody's here. And uh, it's For a harmonica player, it is quite an, an experience. And uh, I became a harmonica player. I bought a harmonica after having seen Maestro Adler when I was 18. He's a few years older than I am, not much. <laughs> But I saw him in movies and then heard the records and then saw the Harmonica Rascals, where these guys played so well and made such fine comedy. And uh, it, my old friend Jerry Murad is here tonight. When I started in the States, they were also friendly to me. And uh, I am, ich habe viel hier und wenn ich noch viel spreche, kommt es hier. Und ich, das, da kann ich, ich spiele in diese. See that? See, did you know that, Larry? <laughs> My water. <laughs> no. <laughs> Ein kleine Probe. <laughs> Muss ich diese gebrauchen? Diese? Okay. Kleine Ton. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Bisha asthma. This is medicine for my asthma. You want some? <laughs> <laughs> That's why I play so fast. <laughs> ich möchte gern meine Freunde vorstellen aus Belgien. Ich bin zwischen Brüssel und New York natürlich. Michel E. Michel Adzi Georgiou, Grekisch aus Belgien. Bruno Castellucci. with Duke Ellington. Take a little trip around Sea Jam Blues. Uh, we will start in the key of C and travel all the way up to the key of G to show that this is a chromatic baby. <laughs> you can play the blues on it, but it's not the same flavor as the diatonic, but Changed my life just the same.
Sorry, folks, it's my allergies, you know. Ich habe ein String Quartet im Lungen. <laughs> no, two blues harps. <laughs> Still with Duke Ellington. If I had two songs to take to an island, this would be certainly one of them, or one of the, the two of them. <laughs> Sophisticated lady.
Bruno Castellucci mit ein bisschen Energie. Ich habe nun in diesen 40 Jahren in Amerika habe ich mit allen Leuten, für viele verschiedene Leute gespielt. I played with almost well, just about everybody from Ella Fitzgerald to the son of John Lennon, I worked with them. So, this is an example of a cooperation with Quincy Jones. This is Brazil 87 or 88 or 89 or 92, I don't know. The composer is Ivan Linz. And I recorded this for Quincy Jones, it's called Velas.
Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. <laughs> That's one of the examples of the work I do in America. With Belgian guys this time. Thank you, Sharon. Ja, es kommt später, Bruder. <lacht> ich, wir werden alle zusammen pfeifen dabei. Das, das. Aber zuerst, I don't know what to speak. Ich kann speak Swedish, du? Ich kann alles Fans, ja? Italienisch, alles, alles dabei. But maybe it's safer in English, everybody. That's also nice. You're a jazz fellow up there. But we play something else that you may like. But it all started with women for me in an international way when Benny Goodman heard an arrangement, a progression of harmonies that I wrote for the beautiful melody Stardust. And I even said, I made a little record with Belgian friends and I even gave a copy at the beginning of my American safari to Jerry Murad. And uh, it's a very profound memory to me. And I would like, we all should think of the king of swing, Benny Goodman, who left us about four or five years ago. And we played those progressions. I was a bebop, bebop musician, and I'm, I am still but that was the typical cliche of bebop harmony in 1950-49. Okay, Michel, give me a nice... Oh no, I start with you. Thank you. 
Well, I played almost like that 40 years ago. And uh, that's what Benny Goodman wanted to hear. I said, I told him, I know another song, but that's the only one he wanted to hear. I've played for films, you know, when something, I played for many backgrounds. I didn't compose much film music, but we'd like to play for you a film that is the best known of the ones I have played for, Midnight Cowboy. Okay, everybody whistle with us. You can do better, you know what I mean?
Everybody. Thank you, Shannon. Thank you. Feels good. Bruno Castellucci. Michel Azzigi of you. Michel Air. Thank you very much. We do appreciate very much. Uh, thank you. We play. <clears throat> I wish I had a third hand. Then I could play. You see, the blues guys, you don't need anything to hear, you know. A guy started once to make me a little machine, an engineer in Boston from the MIT, but he connected this, he used the bell, you know, that was strumming a, bell, a button and knopf von drücken für klingeln, um, elektrisch klingen. But he went to the end, so each time it, <laughs> that we couldn't use it, you know. So Bruno, <laughs> Bruno can do. <laughs> Bruno will be my third hand. So we give you. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
attention to the job, Jack. <laughs> You're fired. Wait a minute. You know, everybody, no, let's get the guys together because there's not enough attention and credit given to Stevie Wonder as a harmonica player. I think he's fantastic. And we will finish. Yes. He's, they say, oh, he can't play fast. He, he plays no technique. No, the real technique in an instrument is to express your ideas and know what to do to express them, and Stevie can do that. I learned a lot from Stevie. If anyone influenced me, I must say, first, of course, Maestro Adler brought the existence of the harmonica to my attention in the beginning. I listened to his recording, I learned a lot from it, but then jazz changed my life. And lately, Stevie, the way, he still has the way, <laughs> to get one note and hit it like only he can. And he, uh, talking about, for the harmonica players, why do you pick a song in a certain key? Stevie Wonder play, played Isn't She Lovely in the key of E major. Why? Because in that key, some of these effects, the blues, Uh, it's like the guitar sometimes in E, it's easy. But we will play All in Love is Fair, one chorus, and then Isn't She Lovely. But I play it in C. <laughs> Excuse me, Stevie. Thank <laughs> you. 
Africa, Meadow Town, here it is. Thank you, thank you. My friends, Michel, Michel, Bruno, vielen Dank, danke schön. Thank you very much. I don't think we have to worry about the life of the harmonica. The harmonica is here to stay under any, every, more, every form, every style of music. So it's more than music is here to stay, of course. <laughs> Shall I play one more, all alone? Oh no. Michel, Michel, Brel. No, we, we will. I am from Belgium, and we would like to leave you with the message of love expressed by a Belgian giant of music and poetry, Jacques Brel. He wrote the song, Ne me quitte pas. And, uh, no. and it has been translated in English, if you go away, it is not if you go away, it is, do not leave me. There's a big difference. It is the most beautiful expression of love. And I try to play it with my little honer sandwich here. Thank you, fellas. <laughs> Keep on making them like that, man. Thank you. Honer changed my life. I must say, thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you.